Good news. Yeah. I got a new job. Mazel tov. Yeah. I handed in my notice. Here. You want to stand in front of the camera like that? No, no, okay. no, 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 we're fine. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hi, how are you? Yeah, good. Yeah. Hi. 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 Okay, a few less people this week. Um, various reasons. I wanted to keep it going anyway. I couldn't stop it once that we're doing it. And that's it. Yeah? Thank so you very much. We're going to carry on. And they can get the details after. Okay, so we're on to session number four. Is it running? It's running, yeah. Okay. We're on to session number four. And um, we said so far the difference between men and women. I mean, we spoke about it quite a bit. Men and women are different. How different? Very different. Women are relationship beings and men are not. And if they're not, what do they need? They need a job. And what's the job? Make my wife happy when? All the time. All the time. Yeah. And so we spoke, spoke about quite a bit about that. And that women are relationship beings. Therefore, there's three things that make them happy. Attention, affection, and appreciation. On the other hand, what makes a man happy? He needs a big ego stroke when, when he does his job. Okay. So when he's doing his job, and he's aware of what he's really trying hard with the, with, the, with, the, with the gratitude and with the appreciate 20 minutes and the eye contact and and he's doing all the things that she says you know makes her happy and he's paying attention to it and and, it, and she's acknowledging it to makes her makes her feel that wow he understands me a bit he knows he knows what's going on in my day yeah and even when he's at work so he sometimes calls and leaves, leaves messages and love notes all the things we spoke about so then that's great and he doesn't do that because he's a man and he forgets. So we have to remind him. So when we, how do we remind him as a woman? By saying to him, look, you know, I really wanted to give you an ego stroke, but um, you're not doing your job. So do your job and I can give you the ego stroke. So I want to give it to you. Yeah? And then he says, ah, oh, great. It feels great to get the ego stroke. I'm going to do it. Okay. So we, that's basically the nature of the man and the woman. And it's simple. And that's, that's what we, we do that. Everyone's going to be happy. But there's some challenges. Some major challenges, some hurdles that we have to overcome. And even if we want to do the job and we know what the job is, there's going to be these hurdles, these challenges. And one of them, the biggest one of them, is communication, which is why we're doing four sessions on communication. The first one we talked about was language between men and women, women how different it is. That in short, men are more direct and they use less words. And women are more indirect and they use lots of words for very good reasons because they're bonding and they're spending time in that way, which women, it's a woman way of doing it, a man way of doing it is a bit different, and therefore he gets lost in that, and you have to give him a break, you know, if he doesn't do his job, you give him a break, and then he gets better at it, but don't assume so much, is basically the last thing I think that we said in the last session. We were in a hurry, so we just, on that point, we didn't elaborate a lot, but women take a lot of things for granted, they think men know everything that's going on in, the, in, the, in their head, which is, which is already, you know, one problem, one level. But worse than that is they penalise the men for not knowing and they, and they actually think they're doing it on purpose. How could you not know that? You're obviously, you know, doing it on purpose and you don't care and you don't love me and, you, and you're only interested in sitting in front of uh, your computer and doing that all day long and nothing else. Yeah, and you're like, you're sitting there as a man thinking all these pressures, all these bills, and I'm going to get some money and I'm going to take them on a holiday and I'm going to make my wife happy and I'm going to buy her presents. Yeah, and then she comes to you and says, oh, you do all that, all this sit there thinking and working. You know, you go to the office and you, you think, you know, it's so easy how much I've got to do at home before you come up. And there's, there's a misunderstanding there. There's big assumptions on the women's part, much, much more than you probably want to realise without having someone to tell you that really it, is, it really is difficult. Men don't know what you're thinking. Right? 99% of the time, women think men know, they don't know. And they're just innocent. Sometimes you might have a guy that's making excuses and he is lazy. Yeah? But a lot of the time, he's trying really hard to get it right. And he's really putting effort in it. And he's still getting it wrong. And then he's being told off for it. And it doesn't, doesn't feel nice on the man's side. And it creates distance. And that's where we have to try and break that distance. And I'm dealing with an older couple um, at the moment, one of the couples I'm dealing with. Um, and um, it's such a shame to see after so many years of living through this distance, how desperate he is to be close to his wife and how she's so over, overbearing and overpowering um, and he just feels pushed all the time. And when he's pushed, he goes and does things which... Uh, not exactly the right things, and uh, and then it causes these problems. Okay. So, communication is one of the most important things in trying to break that distance. Yeah. 
because we are men and women and we are different and at the end of the day we're always going to be naturally how we are and we can't change that we said in the last session if you remember that a lot of the time these expectations of women or men is a wish for them to do things as the women do it and if you a man does that then he's not a man anymore he becomes a woman that you didn't marry a woman you married a man so we don't want to change him and men often say it's another point which we said it's very important to recap on as well we're still recapping at the moment is that men Will com women will complain about the men not getting it and not knowing it and they didn't understand me and, and you should get it the first time, yeah? Men will often complain about feeling you're trying to mould me, you're trying to make me something that I am not. Why can't you leave me as I am because this is who you marry and this is who I am and I want to stay the same and I want you to accept that and keep me as I am. I like, there's nothing wrong with the way I am, yeah? So why are you trying to make me something else, yeah? So, but then there's a big problem because if that's what the woman wants and the man wants something else, he can tell and say they're not compatible. But it can't be that all men and women are not compatible. All men and women are compatible if they put effort into it. Yeah? And especially if they married each other, they love each other, so they have to make... make put, I know so many people that got married, they didn't even speak the same language. And, and I know someone literally, someone local, probably most of us will know that person. Somebody knocked on the door collecting money and she gave him money and then he said are you married she said no he said i want to find a husband for you you're not married so he randomly said he knows a man in israel she's english right and that man rang her up and they couldn't even speak on the phone because they didn't speak the same language and they're married with children now three four children and they're really happy you know Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. why because they put effort and they made it work yeah so they would have still been single if not. So the point is, is that if, if two people want to make it work, they, they can make it work. So session four is communication skills two. Um, and the, the issue is, is that, is that women have lots of issues. That's the issue of the day. Yeah? Women have issues. Every day of their life, because we've explained before, a woman goes in the world and she goes about her daily business and everything is a relationship. So everything she engages in and everything she's going to be involved in is another relationship. Yeah, I, mean, I think we said earlier on about the men on, from Marvin from the visa, the example given is that if a, buy a woman a bunch of flowers, she can throw it in the bin and enjoy it and then throw it in the bin. Like a man looks at it, he's like, you're spending money to buy something which is dead and watch it wither away and die even more. And then go and have to spend more money to get more of them. <laughs> so why do women take more pleasure than, let's say, a plant? The man will say, invest in a plant. It will produce the flowers. And then again, it will produce the flowers. It's a good investment because you, you, you buy one and you get many for free forever. <laughs> so, yeah? so, so the problem is, is that if you give a woman a plant, you're giving her a baby to look after. And, and she has feelings for that plant. And when the plant is withering, she's in pain, and if the plant is doing well, she's a bit happier, and, and it's a big problem because if that plant fails, you're giving her a chance to feel really bad about, about failing, and she doesn't want to fail, and she doesn't want to let the relationship down with the plant. <clears throat> but that plant is only an example of everything in her life. Every person, every, every he, even the, <clears throat> the woman at the, at the till, you don't even know, you just see it when you go shopping. It, I, I can't believe how many cashiers my, my, my wife has relationships with. Right? <laughs> they go each time, how are you, as your children? <laughs> what? <laughs> so not one or two or three or four, it's every single person that you ever meet is going to have a relationship with them. Now, when you have a relationship with anything, sincerely, then it's going to mean that you're going to get affected by the relationship. And getting affected by the relationship is there'll be issues. So we have to expect as men that every day of our married life a woman is going to have a new issue that she never had yesterday. And it's not going to stop. You can't say, no, don't do that. Don't, don't. So what are you saying to her? Don't live. Don't be a person. That is what Hashem made, right? So you, we have to accept that that is going to happen. She's going to come home flustered about something, right? I'm not, I mean, some women are more emotional, less emotional. I'm not saying everyone is exactly identical, the same, right? But a, a, a normal woman will come home and say, you know what happened today? And she's going to have a story. And a man is going to think, you know, that if he's not doing his job, he's going to be fiddling on his phone and showing that it's not important. The girl whose gratitude important, respect and language. You have to respect what's important to her. If you care for her, she's going through a real situation. It's a real drama. It's a crisis, whatever it might be, yeah? 
he has to say to himself, you know, if she's so upset by it, what would make me so upset that I would be like that? So you think, well, that's what she's going through right now. And it might be for me something much more of a crisis, God forbid. Yeah, that would that would get me really, you know, upset. Otherwise, so, no, life, get on with life, get, get a life, you know. Right? But, but that's not what is needed in this situation. So what should a man do? So this session really is about, this part is about what the man needs to do. Right? Last time we talked about the difference between men and women, and there was a bit of men, a bit of women. Today is really what the man's function is, to help the woman who having an issue. I mean, the best way to look at it is a man and woman are one, they're one soul, they're a team. But all the issues seem to pile up on the woman's side of the relationship. Okay, so you think, why is it always, if you, if you had a, a scales, like the issues are going to be much more. Like, you know when your wife says, I want to have a chat with you. What time are you coming home? When you come home today, you know, can we make some time? <laughs> oh boy, right? yeah. we know what that means, right? There's a certain language of, you know, uh, we need to talk. <laughs> so that means there's something serious to talk about, yeah? So um, I have to prepare myself. I have to brace myself. Now, now, the right thing to do is for the man to say, okay, she's got something on her mind, it's affecting her, that's my wife. She needs me now to help her through that situation. And it's very different for men and for women. I can't remember if we gave this example in this group, but say a man comes home from work and he feels that he had a hard day at work and somebody, one of his colleagues, did a nasty on him. He stole his client. He, he, he went to the boss and made it like he did something when he took all the credit for something which he never did. These are the kind of things that happen all the time, conflict resolution. They happen in work, the workplace <coughs> nearly, you know, most days they're happening. Yeah, most probably he's going to come away complaining something happened at work. How will the man deal with it, classically? He'll come home, he'll be in a bit of a mood, he'll be a little bit quiet, he'll go into himself. He might, might, if, if he's that way inclined, go out with his friends and try and forget about it. But the last thing he'd really want to do is talk to his wife about it. Some men run straight to the wife to tell them everything. And I don't mean that that's a bad thing. It's a very good thing. But if he's going to have to tell his wife that he's an idiot, and you know what I am? I'm, a, I'm an idiot because this is what happened to me. And I feel so stupid. Now I have to make myself a stupid an idiot in front of my wife as well and go through the whole pain of it again. And nothing's going to change. So what's the point of telling her? So now she's going to feel bad as well. He might even be protective. So what's the point? There's no point, right? So that might happen, and then suddenly the phone will ring, and his, it's his, his other friend at work who knows the whole story, and they'll start talking about it on the phone, and she's like, you never told me that, you never told me that. Huh? If he loved me, he'd tell me everything. Why does he never open up to me? He'll go and talk to his mom, and he'll go and talk to his friends, and when it comes to me, nothing. Right? Now, now that can happen. I'm not saying it will always happen, but that can happen quite easily. Yeah, the women can complain that see, my husband doesn't want to talk to me, right? But the reason is, as we explained, he has to deal with it in his own way, right? If a good wife would say to him, look, I can see there's an issue here that you've had. You go away and deal with it in any way that you want. If you want to talk to me, fine. If you want to talk to me, fine. Yeah, you go away and do your thing, and I'm going to hold the fortress together until you come back to life again, yeah? I can see that there's something going on, right? And I understand that, okay? That would be a good way to let the man deal with it in his own way, because... He's a man and he's got an ego and he's got his own, you know, he's looking for a solution and, and telling his wife isn't necessarily going to be the solution. It's very interesting because most men in this country especially have, prefer female doctors, older female doctors, like a mum, you know. Because <laughs> when a man has a, like, a cut or a wound, it's like he wants someone to tell him and say, oh, there, there, you know, come on, he's a big, he's a big baby, he's a big hypochondriac. Right? Every man is. Every man is a big baby. You have to know that. Every man is really inside is a big baby. And after his mum, he's looking for someone to take that role. I mean, it's very Freudian and, and people can write books about that, but there must be some truth in it. He's looking for some many ways that he's, he's going to be mothered, you know, and, and, and looked after and baby to some extent. But that's all to do with, you know, I need a bit of sympathy and a bit of massage and, and, and a little bit pampered and give me some, some, bring my food to me and make me feel like a king, you know. That's, that's that side of it. But when it comes to the side of I'm a genius and now I'm going to look like an idiot, I don't want to feel good. I'm not going to feel good by doing that, yeah. Now take that same story and apply it to a woman, typically. A woman will come back from work, she had the same scenario, somebody stole her client, somebody took the credit for something, right. She's really hurt, right? In a, in a normal functional marriage, who's going to be the person she wants to tell every detail to? Her husband. 
is going to come home and say, you know what happened to me? And she'll go and she'll cry. And she doesn't mind feeling like an idiot. In fact, she wants to feel like an idiot with her husband. And go through the whole... It's so different. I mean, typically, I'm not saying everyone's the same, but it's, it's so true when you think about it. Why would a woman want to go and go and feel all that pain again and go more into it just so that her husband will also know about it and know what she's feeling? Why? Because she wants to share it. She's in a relationship being. And, she, and more than anyone else in the world, her husband needs to know at every stage of, of every moment what is going on in the life to share the relationship. Yeah? But he doesn't need that in the same way. He might need sympathy, he might need someone to understand, yeah, he might be, a, you know, a bit of chizuk, it's going to be okay, we, we love each other anyway. Yeah, that's not obviously going to make him feel good. But it's not an innate, a, a, an intrinsic need in every man to have to go and share all the details with my wife, because it's not necessarily going to make me feel better. It's going to make me feel worse, actually. And I'll only be doing it because I love her, because I might need to share it with her, because that's what we normally do, or something like that. But not because he naturally needs to be healed, by talking to her. That's a, can you see the difference between the two? Uh, that's something to really think about. So now let's talk about, now that we understand a woman's having a relationship all the time around her with things, and that's probably why every day she'll have issues, even more so than the man will. Yeah? And we should expect it. So how do we cope with it? As a man, what was the right thing to do? So in terms of communication, we have an acronym called LOVE, which is you've got on your sheets, right? There's no O, but there's L-V-E which is listen, validate, and empathize. In other words, our argument over here is that if a man does his job, which is to do what the wife needs, then he has to be a, learn to be a good listener. This is, I'm saying this slowly because it's so deep and profound, and it's so, every time I think about it, it's so head, nail on the head. Yeah? The, the goal of the mission is for the woman to feel that after she, she's coming to share something with him, right? So she must have a reason why she's doing that. So the goal is to make her feel afterwards that she accomplished that, right? So what would make her feel that it was accomplished? That means he listened to me. He knew, he heard everything that I said. I wasn't talking to the wall and he was sending emails, right? Or playing fantasy football or something on his phone. Right? He actually was listening and taking in the things that I said. So that's, that's number one. We'll talk about how to do that in a second. Now after he heard, what should be his reaction? Why, is she, why did she want him to hear that? For what reason? Because she feels that there's pain from that story that's troubling her. Right? That as a woman, she's going to feel affected by that story. So... You've got two choices. You can either make her feel correct in feeling that or incorrect in feeling that. You understand what I'm saying? So really, when we come to that point, we'll see that the woman is not interested in your opinion at all. So you shouldn't tell her, don't she feel like that. Not, exactly. She is not asking you whether you agree or disagree. She's trying to tell you what she is feeling and she's going through. This might be a breakthrough for women to think about as well, because I might not realize this, right? I'll come to examples in a second. So, but number two is to validate, to validate her feelings. She wants someone to say to her, I completely understand why you'd think that, why you'd feel that, why that happened, why that's going through your head, how horrible that must feel for you, how terrible this person is for doing this to you. It's totally justified. Of course, there'll be conflicts where you might not think it is justified. You might disagree, you might disagree with think she's wrong for what she's doing, right? And we'll come to that in a second. But, but the goal to, of the mission, to make her feel that, that, that whatever she wants to talk to you about, the purpose of it is being fulfilled, is to listen, and then to validate her feelings, and then after, she, now she's, she, you're in the same problem that she's in. So how do you get out the problem or soothe the problem? Is to empathize, which is words of endearment, saying, okay, we'll get better, or, you know, don't worry, everyone's not like that, we, 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 you know, we have to be stronger, and we'll get through it, and I'm here for you, and whatever, you know, gechizuk, words of strength, you know, and, and, and support. Or solve it, at that point, if it can be solved. Right, but until you've got to that point, there's no discussion of any solving, because she hasn't asked you to get on the telephone and have a go at someone. As a man, everything we're used to thinking about is, is a purpose, like going hunting, you get the game and you kill it, you bring it home and your wife cooks it if you're spotty, right? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean that, but I'm just no, using it in a jokey way. Yeah? Right? But, but the man is thinking, my job is done. I've 
put the food on the table, I paid the bill, whatever, whatever he's thinking in the way that his traditional way of thinking is, I've, I've done, I've executed my part, right? I've solved a problem. Now, if your wife comes and says, so and so, you know, I went to pick up the kids from school and the road turned that woman always cuts me out, she jumps in the queue and blah, blah, blah. what? Again? But you get on the phone to her husband and I'm going to sort him out once and for all, right? Oh, day, Right? It's a problem. There's got to be a solution. I'm getting in there straight away. I'm going to make sure she doesn't do it again. He did that to my wife? <laughs> You're kidding me. <laughs> it's all about, it's all about uh, protection and, and uh, you know, if, he's, if, he, if he wants to be a man, well, he, in his idea, what he should be doing, yeah? As a man, as a protector, as a guardian, as a good husband. And that also is a traditional thing. It's not like that in every culture. And the society obviously has got moans about the fact that, you know, that's a traditional way for a man to deal with the, the male, um, you know, uh, role. But it's very different if we're now saying that the, is that's not initially what she's asking me to do. She's coming home to me with a problem. And first of all, I need to share the problem. So I have to understand, listen to the facts, validate her feelings, and empathize at the end of it. And then we'll see what's going to happen after that. That's the key to it. Let's go back now. So if a man wants to do a good job, right, by being a good listener, how can he be more effective in the first stage, which is the listening stage? Right, one comes and she's, you're about to go out, and you're in a hurry, and you know every minute there's going to be more traffic, and you, or whatever, and man is, is really pressured, yeah? And she says, I need to speak to you. How long is it going to take? Right. Is it going now, to be quick? now she doesn't want that reaction because that means you don't care, that means she's not important, that means you've got better things to do, that means she feels like trash, right? She wants to say, of course, right now I'm going to put everything down, only talk to you, nothing else I want to do right now but do that. Okay? Which is what she should also make him feel, but I'm just saying in this case that we're talking about, looking at, analyzing it in this way. So first thing is to listen. There's five magic words that make a person be really effective as a listener. Now we're talking to the men specifically. Can you guess what they are? Ah, uh, mm. uh, uh, mm. uh, oh, uh, aha, ha. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> now you might think this is a bit uh, patronizing or something like that. You'll see, no, it's fine for women to know that a man is <coughs> using these magic words. Because if she says to him, um, you know, I had a really bad day, and he says to her, and he says to her, Aha! That's not going to work! <laughs> he said the wrong one, right? But if he says to her, Oh, oh, right? And then she says, Yeah, this, this that woman again, you know, the one I told you about last time, you go, ah, ah, Again! I'm going to get her! Right? You know? so, so that means there's, you've got a rapport building up, right? That means there's an understanding over here that he is listening to what you're saying. So it's feedback. When we learn counseling skills, yeah, as a counselor, feedback, and matching skills, energy levels, all different words to use for a person to be able to make the other person feel that they know that you're saying something and that it's a feedback to that. I heard what you said and my reaction was to show you that you know, as an access cue, a, a response, that I'm, I'm with you. I'm on the same wavelength. So if a woman's talking with lots and lots of details and the man has to keep up with it, right? Because it's all in her head and it's lots and lots of details and she's very good at that. So he can't stop, say, hang on a minute, I just want to take some notes, I'm going to put a little memo on this, right, all right, carry on now. Let me get my dictaphone out, I can record it and, and go back. No, it's not going to be, she's, 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 she's not going to like that. So the best thing he can do is to show her that I'm listening. So, ah, uh, huh, it's all the right noises at the right time, she knows he's listening. Okay? He shouldn't be looking away, he shouldn't be looking at his phone, he shouldn't be doing, trying to do something else, but, yeah, ideally... He should be completely ready to listen to everything that she's saying. So we've got that. So you can see how that's very... They're about five magic words, but they're very useful in this situation. In our everyday life, you're on the phone. Yeah? So she's like, and then, you know what happened? Then Mrs. So-and-so came in, she got involved, and you know what she's like, you know? And uh, Sasha and her aside. And you go, and all you've got to do is go, mmm, and ah, aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah, and you know, in the, in the 70s, Carl, there was this following of Carl Rogers, where they tried to counsel students, especially on campuses. It was all based on, on counselling, which is just by listening. They never said a word, just, just these noises, ah, ah, mm, mm, ah, which is, which is good, you know, if a person just wants to talk, 
But if a person needs some help and you don't don't say actually say anything to them, no advice or anything, no guidance, yeah. it's frustrating. So this is only good when it comes to the listening part. Man's job is to listen. This is an effective way to listen. Now the next stage is 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 once you've got the details down and she can feel you you, you feel that she would think now that you understood what's going on, without cutting in and saying, "Oh, I can solve it for you." She said, "But how didn't tell me the story yet?" Yeah, you're always trying to finish my sentences for me. Give me a chance to say, say what I want to say. You're like, but it's been half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of a story where somebody came to me and accused me of not listening. There were 15 minutes in my, they only wanted to get money anyway. And I said to them, don't come to my office if you're coming to, to just for money. No, 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 right? 15 minutes non-stop. And I said, okay, it's 15 minutes now. I said, five, it's 15. And they're like, ah, oh, you don't give us a chance to speak. <laughs> and I said, look, what is, what's the main point? Money. Can we ask? <laughs> it was just money. It was a total scam. They wanted thousands and thousands of dollars. You know. Anyway, but the bottom line is, is that a woman has to feel that you, we did listen to her. And then the next thing is to validate. Now, this is very important because, especially for women, I'm not a woman and I can't claim to know this firsthand, but from the programs that we've done and speaking to other women, my wife, others, that women often feel very, um, without saying a, a negative word or to put a woman down, they feel quite often silly, yeah? That they did something in impulse or because they were feeling a bit more emotional at that moment. They did something, they feel bad about themselves that they maybe didn't do something that was the right thing to do. And quite often a woman will come to her husband because she trusts him and she needs him to say, that was fine, that you did that. Yeah, you shouldn't think less of yourself for doing that. Yeah, women sometimes feel that, first of all, we live in a society where it's male dominant, even though they say it's not anymore, but it is, you can do the same job that you do, men get more money than women. Women are, we don't know this as men so often, but quite often women are going in the world, constantly thinking and expecting everyone to look down upon them because they're women. Right? So we just think that's a feminist, crazy people. Yeah, but the, the fact is that women have to struggle much more to achieve things, yeah? And so she might think in her mind before she starts being, I'm going to say this to my husband and he's going to think I'm silly. He's going to think I'm stupid. Right? So we have to know that as husbands, in this situation, as a carer in this moment, of this moment, I don't want her to feel that. And what she needs from me is to validate her feelings. So it's absolutely justified that you should feel that. Because she wants me to know what she feels, that's what she's telling me. Yeah? That must be what's going on, otherwise... She wouldn't be talking to me. So what does she need from me is to listen and, and understand what it's like to be in that situation and then to take, turn and say, so actually, yeah, I totally, under, I can see that totally. Yeah. Right. Now, what she, in that situation, if we've got it right, yeah, which is, I'm saying is usually the case, she doesn't ask me for my opinion. She didn't ask me for, for my opinion. She didn't say, what do you think I should have done or what would you have done otherwise? Right. Because a lot of times they will come and say, why did you do that? okay then you wouldn't have to waste my time talking to me for half an hour right that's that's the, the, the what comes out of of the of, of she comes to him to get some sympathy and he makes her feel stupid right oh, you're so stupid for doing that you know I told you last time if you didn't if you did it this way then this won't happen right so what well, I'm a little kid and you're the parent or the teacher you're trying to tell me what to do with my life and it becomes a scenario Okay, I'm not going to go any further. I can see I'm getting into hot water. <laughs> but why would men do that? Because men feel also against the wall. She's giving me a problem that I, I don't know how to solve this problem. How can I, if I don't solve this problem, how can I be her hero? How can I be a, a wise man when I have no clue what to do with this situation, right? So the best thing is to offer a solution. And if she doesn't like it, I'll modify it. But... In a man's mind, he's thinking, I'm being confronted with a problem, and I'm the Prime Minister, and the whole nation depends on me, and I need to give an answer and make a decision. Right? And, and, and if I can't make a decision, I have to find a way out of it. Say, so, oh, I don't know, talk to me tomorrow, I'm, I'm, I'm too much, I can't do it. But in his, in his heart of hearts, he's actually thinking, I just failed. I didn't solve it. I didn't have the answer. I'm going to go and ask someone... Great. I'm going to ask a rabbi, I'm going to ask a, a wise man, I'm going to ask a, I don't know, a professor or somebody that asked my boss or some expert who knows about these things. Yeah? 
so he might be humble enough to do that. But all of this is coming from a mistake because nobody actually asked him to solve anything. And he is doing that to himself. Every time his wife speaks to him, every time his wife, every time his wife presents him with an issue, his immediate reaction is, I'm a Rambo. I need to solve this. Let's get the equipment out and go to war. <laughs> and, and, and there now wasn't actually in the, anywhere in that conversation a, a, a question to her husband, I have a problem, can you solve it for me? She came home with an issue. Her issue was to do with her relationships in life. And she's feeling something about what got, what's gone on in that event. And she is looking for her husband to, to listen, validate that feeling and, and get some strength from him as a couple, because the relationship is going to be stronger, because they're going to get through this experience together. However trivial or great it might be, even if it's not a major crisis. But understanding the nature of, of what's actually going on is something that men don't usually do. Right? Now, I'm telling you, even if she says to you, shall I wear this dress or shall I wear this dress, or do I look overweight in this dress or fat in this dress, right? she's still not asking you what dress to wear. She might be, but she probably is not actually asking you, you know, what's your opinion? Because I'm going to follow what you're going to say. She's actually telling you, I'm so confused that I don't know which dress to wear. And I want you to be confused with me and suffer it. Right? And share the experience, because you're my husband. And when we get to that confusion, right, then I will decide what I'm going to do. And it will probably be the opposite of what you, you, you suggest anyway. She said, yeah, it's a good point, but actually, no, I'm going to do this because of that. I should come up with some other thing, right? <laughs> and, and I was like, what's going on over here? Right? My, my, she doesn't listen to my opinion. She, doesn't, she asks me for things and she doesn't do them anyway. So what's the point of giving an opinion? And it's all a misunderstanding and communication of actually what's going on. So we have a rule that even if your wife asks you for your, your opinion, assume that she doesn't need your opinion right now. She's actually sharing with you what's going on in her feelings and her mind and she's actually sharing an issue with you and therefore you have to listen by going e -u -r -r, mm -mm -mm, right all the noises to show that you listen the feedback because it's good and useful in that situation then to validate her feelings and say now now i can i can see where you are and i understand why you did that and why you are feeling that and why you're in that situation and i would i would do the same yeah, I can, that's called validation you're not a stupid person for thinking that. It's not diabolical for you to... It doesn't matter that I told you not to do that last time. That should not even come into it because she didn't ask you for your opinion. Right? For example, if a woman is crying, right, and you say to her, Oh, don't cry. Don't be upset. Yeah? That's one of the worst things to say to a person who's crying, even to a child. Because you're actually telling them not to feel what they're feeling. But they are crying. Don't breathe. <laughs> What do you mean don't breathe? I have, I have to breathe, right? So if a woman has got feelings to cry and it sets her off and she gets tearful and starts crying, there's no point telling her not to cry because she is crying. You can't say, I fundamentally disagree with your, with your um, outlook on life that makes you cry. I mean, what does it mean? Yes, I, I, I uh, theologically and fundamentally disagree with your position on crying at this moment. Well, that's nonsense. She is actually crying, you know? It's like saying, I fundamentally disagree that it should rain right now and it's pouring with rain outside. So your statement means nothing because it is raining. She is crying. You can't tell a woman not to feel what she's feeling. Or a man. It be the same thing. And we make that mistake because we're trying to solve a problem and we haven't really understood the nature of what's going on because there isn't a problem to solve. She wants to cry and she wants to tell you how she feels and she wants your empathy after the validation and the... Um, and the listening. And that's usually what's going on. And if in all of that she asks you your opinion, the best thing to do is to say, are you really asking me my opinion? Do you really want to know what I think? Yeah? Because then she's going to think to herself, you might say something that's going to hurt me, maybe I'm not ready for it, and, and she might prepare herself to hear what you're going to say. But that's a new conversation, and that's about solving problems. Mm. That's about new opinions, new ideas, new ways of dealing with the situation. She didn't come to you and say to you, look, I've dealt with this association in so many different ways. Have you got a new way for me to try and work, work through this thing? Because it keeps on happening again and again. She didn't say that. She didn't say, I commissioned a surveyor to come and analyse the whole situation and, and I don't know which, which path to follow now. Can you give me a hand in deciding which? She didn't say it. It was not so scientific. She's just upset 
and she's got an opinion and an issue. She will have every single day because there's going to be new issues because it's the relationship being, there's going to be new relationships. And it's, it's just a really deep understanding of, of what's going on. You ever hear two women on a phone talking to each other? It's, it's what we can describe a validation fest. If I was you, I would feel the same. You're, you're absolutely, of course, what, what an audacity. You know, that happened to me once. And it's like just making the other woman feel that she's, a, she's absolutely perfect in everything that, that's going on and why it like, should be that way and what caused it. How, it's all validation. But you think, you know, you know what I'm saying? Maybe you've ever noticed this before because you don't bring it to a man's attention. He wouldn't understand that. I think even women don't realize that what's going on. If, if a man is talking to a woman, he would not think about saying to her, ah, you know, if that's what you feel, I can understand. Why would he say those words? Why would you even think that the conversation is about that? You won't hear that in the conversation. You'll hear that you're upset, and my job is that you should not be upset, because being upset is a bad thing, so I need to stop you being upset. So I've got to say, if I, don't fail, if I fail at this, and your friend, your girlfriend can speak to you and sort it out, and I can't, there's something wrong with me. I'm a failure, I'm a bad husband, I'm not a good communicator, I'm not a good... And it's a mistake because when she speaks to that friend, the friend's not trying to solve the problem. She's just talking about the problem. And then what happened? And what did that make you feel? Wow, after you felt that, this must have made you feel much worse, right? I would never say that to a man. If a man said to me, you know, this is what happened. This guy, he knocked into my car. And then he came up to me and started blaming me for it. Would I, would, would I say to him... That must have made you feel much worse. I would never say that. I'd say, oh, get out of the car and sort him out. <laughs> you know? What a cheek, you know. <laughs> what did he do? You know, it's all about what he did. It's all about who's right and wrong, right? But with women who are talking to each other, it's all about understanding how they felt in that situation being over there. And understanding the details, right? And if a woman's coming to her husband in that situation, in this, a situation like that, that's what we need to do as well. So the key is, is that 99% of the time, we should assume, we'll do a much better job if we follow this rule, we should assume that my opinion is not what's being needed, it's not being sought after over here. It's not seeking my opinion now. And therefore, I should not give my opinion. And if I've got a very, very strong opinion, I have to know how it is that I'm going to bring this opinion up. Because if you think, oh, you know, the whole problem is, man, straight away, after two seconds of the conversation, she never even heard what she said. He's probably got it all wrong, right? And it's all going to change. Because all the way through the conversation, he's probably changing his opinion. But every time he's thinking, this is what you have to do. No, this is what you have to do. No, this is what you have to do. And he's waiting for a chance to say to her, I can solve that in a second. If you just do this, everything will be, will be, will be solved. Yeah? Right? Meaning he's assertive. Obviously, some people sometimes know things and they, they're not, they haven't got the confidence to maybe come out with it. But... I'm just, the general difference between men and women. Now, he's thinking to solve the problem when that's, as we said, not what really is the solution to what's needed, not, not the mission in, in the situation that, that we're in. Right? So the best thing is to try and make her feel that I heard what she said and I understood it and I validated it and, and I gave her a good feeling to know that she can get cope better with it by empathising. Now what happens, I'm going back to this point now, if a man really thinks that something else needs to be happening, like I really know how to solve this and she's not going to listen to me if I tell her, or maybe in the past that's what I usually do, I just tell her, and, she's, and then she doesn't do it and I get frustrated because she does, I don't talk to you about your problem, because I told you last time not to do that and you did the same thing and it happened to me again. So why should I bother talking to you now? You don't listen to me. Right? How many times do I have to tell you? So, so the answer is, what do you do, really, if you really can solve the problem? Because that's what you're thinking. There's a problem, and I can solve it. And if the problem goes away, then she wouldn't, she wouldn't be standing here moaning at me, right? Um, but again, that's not why she came to me. That's what I want to do as a man, naturally. So how do you stop that? So, so, so first of all, you can't tell yourself, don't see the solution and do something about it. Because a man wants to do something about it. That's number one. Number two is what if you fundamentally disagree in what she's doing? You got to pay. I, I don't think that's wrong. It's cruel. It's wrong. It's against halakha. It's not ethical. It's not moral. You should you should not do that. I don't think what you're doing is a fair thing at all. I disagree with what you're doing. Right. So, first of all, she didn't ask you for your opinion. 
She hasn't asked you what you think. She's telling you what she thinks. Okay? So, that's a different conversation. If you then want to close off the subject, listen, validate, empathize, close off the subject, and then the next day, or when, you, when the mood has changed and she's relaxed and she's calmed down and she's got, she, she needed, you gave her what she needed in terms of her husband being there for her, if you did that job, and now you, you, at the back of your mind, think, you know, there's something about her opinions which I want to discuss with her and go through, you know, even go and ask somebody else about it. I don't actually think that her approach is right. And you know what? We've got kids. I want my kids to do it my way because my way is right. Her way is wrong. I don't like her approach. How can we give the kids mixed messages that's going to be very bad? They're not, they, they'll have two messages and they won't know which one is the right one and you're going to confuse them. And then mommy and daddy are not, are not one, one mind, which is really bad, one of the worst things for children. So then you've got to have a conversation and discuss right, the rights and wrongs of, of, of whatever that topic is and whatever that issue is. But that's not what you do when she's having the issue. Because she didn't come with that in mind. Now, now the problem with that is that it might be a, a moral dilemma for somebody to even s validate her feelings knowing that I fundamentally disagree with, with what she's, she's doing. That's a much bigger problem. Let's try and give an example. Um, um, one of, there's a shidduch taking place, right? And one, one of the members of the, of the, the, the chasm of the color has got an illness. And the other party doesn't know about it, right? So should she tell the, the family of the, of the girl that the husband's got an illness? Should she tell them or not? Because she knows. And she sits there talking to her friend and, uh, and her friend, and she doesn't know what to do because she's in a dilemma. And she tells her husband, I don't know what to do. So, so what will the husband be thinking based on what we said? We'll go and find out the halakha. We'll ask the rabbi, we'll do it. Problem solved, right? Then she doesn't ask you what's the halakha. She said, I'm so cut up because it's such a good friend of mine. And how can I not tell them? But... I don't believe that, you know, if, it, if I was in that situation, I would want to know, but I don't believe it's right to go against that other friend of mine because the Hassan and the Kala are both friends of mine, the parents. So I don't, I'm right in the middle, I don't know what to do, and I'm so cut up and I'm so confused, and my feelings are going all over the place, and I can't work, I can't concentrate. So the husband says, I can solve you the problem, no problem. We'll ring up Rabbi now, find out the halakha, and we'll do that. She's like, but, but my problem is not what's the halakha. My problem is, how can I be disloyal to such a good friend of mine? I would, I would want, in that situation, I'd want them to protect me, and how can I not protect them? You understand? Clear, yeah? So, so, so you might think to yourself, it's clear, if somebody is not well, you have to tell the, the kala. How can you not tell them? How would you mean? You've got even a question about it. Who did I marry? What, imagine they're going to get married, and then the husband, wife's going to find that the husband's terminally ill, and nobody told her. And you know, and you're not telling, and she, you're supposed to be her friend, right? So, how could you then validate her feelings, right? So, so the answer is, once we understand what we said, let's go back to what we said earlier on. Once we understand that when she's talking to me about what she's feeling, you can't tell her what to feel. You can't say, don't cry. She is crying. If she's confused... And she therefore wants to talk to you about how she feels, which we're assuming is 99% of the time, and not to solve the problem. Then, by me validating her feelings, I'm not necessarily agreeing with her. I'm not saying to her, "This is my opinion," because you didn't consent, you didn't, you didn't commission my opinion, and I'm not going to have to tell you about it. I simply am making you feel that I totally understand. You should feel justified for feeling what you feel, your, the confusion, because it's such a difficult case. You know. If somebody came to you in your in your you're a school teacher and somebody said, please, Miss I, uh, Sir, can I speak to you after in break time? I've got a problem. You come in there and says, you know, there's something really difficult going on at home and I don't know how to cope with it, right? So you wouldn't start telling the child go to the police or go and do this, go and that. Either you'll do that, or but the first thing is to make the child feel comfortable and say, how must how do you feel? What does that make you feel? What, what does that? What, how, how do you cope with that? How do you, when you go home, what, what, what goes on in your head? What, what, how do you go through an evening? And, you, know, you understand? And you try to make the child feel in a safe place, that you understood what's going on, and you, and you validate how, what there must be the experience, the ongoing experience. Yeah? And that's what we're doing as men when our wives come up with the issues. We have to show them that I understand why you're feeling that, and that's called validation. If I fundamentally disagree with it, then maybe I need to bring it up at another time. 
Yeah, but usually that's not the case, and usually we're not dealing with such major things. Whenever I give this part, class, I wouldn't have asked that question, and there's a big audience, there'll always be somebody saying, well, what if you actually disagree? How can you agree with something which you, you, you in principle disagree with, you've got a different view on? Okay, but we're not having a debate. We didn't say, let's sit home today, instead of playing Trivial Pursuits, let's have a debate about in a theoretical situation where two people are getting married, blah, 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 what we do. That was not what happened. She's in a situation, in a dilemma, in a, in a, in a life dilemma, a life, a life awkward situation, an issue. Yeah? And she has to get through the issue, and she's telling to her husband to share that. So his job is to listen, validate, empathize. And then she'll feel much better, calmer, and, and the issue will go away. I mean, she dealt with that issue. Now, if that created a new problem, you can discuss it by all means. But, but if we, it's easy to, to, to relate to this by the example we gave of crying. She's crying. You say to her, stop crying. Don't cry. Don't cry. I have no right to tell somebody what they feel. I can't tell you what you're feeling. Don't cry means don't feel the things that you're feeling. You understand? You, you can, can say, say why you cry. That would be a good thing, because then you're saying to her what's going on in your thoughts that's making you cry, and then she's going to tell you, and then you're listening, and you're, and you're validating. And then you're going to say to her, oh, that's why you're crying. Now I understand. I'm trying to think, what would make me cry? It would be really severe to make me cry as a man. Okay? And if you're crying, that means you're feeling what I would feel if that severe thing happened. I never thought of it that way. That's the key. That's the key to it. You could be, you're driving in a car and, and, and you're on a holiday or just I don't know, going somewhere with your wife and it's quiet and then, and then she starts talking about something and you don't exactly know what she's talking about. It's something she read in a book and an article or something, a story, and she, or she's telling you the plot in the film, yeah, and suddenly she'll cry. And, you know, and, and, then she, and she'll say, so there's no knight in shining armour, it doesn't even exist, the whole thing is just uh, invented, right? It's just a dream, you know, or some comment. And you're like, what? And you say, yeah, can you just remind me to take the car to the garage tomorrow because I might forget. I just thought about it. <laughs> Complete chalk and cheese, you know, in that conversation. It's just not, you're not, sure, you're not in the same place at all, or, or, you know. Um, and, and, the, and the reason is because she's in her thoughts, she's in her feelings, and there's something going on over there, and, and she's your wife and she wants to share it with you. So she doesn't ask you for your opinion, she's asking you. So the best thing to do is, why are you tearful? What, what happened? Ah, gosh, now I understand why you're feeling that. That's called validation. I can totally understand that. I can only see that. If men would do that every day, their wives would feel amazing. And they would feel amazing. Because you know what this means? I don't have to solve the problem. There isn't a problem that I have to solve. My biggest uh, um, insecurity or inability or fear of being exposed as being a failure is that I won't have the solution, right? But, but, the, but I only won't have the solution if there was a problem in the first place. But if there's no problem, I don't have to even have the solution. I can do validation, I can do listening, I can do it, but that's easy. An idiot can do that. It's going to sit there and listen and ask her how she feels. I can do that, yeah? But you see, so we've taken away a major hurdle in life, in communication. Yeah? Because... You try doing that again and again and again and see how it works with, 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 with the wife. It, now it's not the point to, to say right or wrong. You have to do it in practice. And she comes home tomorrow day after and says, you never guess what happened to me. Stop. Right. I've got to listen. Who uh, are, mm, whatever, get all the details. Yeah, she knows that you heard it. And say to her, wow, how did that feel? Right? So she says, you are patronizing me like we did in the class. You know, tell me this is coming from the class. Right? Now say, really, I, 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 I want to know. I mean, we now know in the class that my his job is not to have to solve any problem. Right? It's just, it just is, is to find out what's going on and to make her feel that's justified for feeling that. She's going to already calm down. She's already going to feel, oh, my husband's the best husband. He knows how to deal with the situations when I'm in them. Right? And then she needs a bit of strengthening. You know, chizuk going to be okay, 